Welcome to Two Wheels and on this week's show we'll be returning to the trial school to see our man Dave and how he gets on with some expert tuition from the master himself, world champion Dougie Lampkin. And I'll be meeting up with another member of the Street Fighter Owners Club. And later I'll be taking a ride on this, CCM's latest supermoto, the R30. Now we've looked at a lot of Street Fighter machines lately, or recently, and lots of them have been sort of sports bikes really, R1s, Fireblades, GSXRs, that kind of thing, but I want to show you something a little bit different now. A couple of machines I'm going to show you this week. Uh, not really uh, your sports bikes, I think that's fair to say, Di, isn't True, it? True, yeah. More what I would call a retro Street Fighter. Yeah, that's the idea behind them. Do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. this one, this is your good ladies, this yeah, is Debs. Yeah, this no, is just... Debs. Let me just show you this crash helmet. You see this crash helmet with this paint design on it? This bike sort of came to be because of this, didn't it? Yeah. Just explain the yeah. story to me. Well, the bike was for a birthday. Um, obviously, I ran late with it and didn't get it finished in time, so I was offered a crash helmet at the right money, so I bought the crash helmet and gave it to her for a birthday. Right. Uh, and she liked it that much. She says, right, then I'll have the paint in exactly the same, uh, which caused a few problems, but so you've we, had to we've got it. paint the bike to match the helmet? Yeah. Yeah, which is unusual because normally, people, normally the go the other way around, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so I've yeah. said it's a kind of a retro Street Fighter, if you like, yeah? Yeah. What is it then? Tell me, come on. Basically, it's a, it's a Kawasaki GPZ650 engine and tank uh -huh. uh, fitted into a, an early Z500 frame with the back end cut off it. Yeah. GPZ1100 running gear grafted in. Um, Put the Z900 tailpiece, yeah. just to bring the lines back in. Um, there's TZR125 foot peg hangers and front mud guard. Um, it's a bit of everything, isn't it? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. It's it's it, basically it's the spares I've had left for a while. Right, I was going to say know? how easy is it to get bits because is it easier than? It, than I know exactly what been it. Around a long yeah, time, these yeah. Sort of bikes, the parts they? now are becoming classics. You yeah. can get the GPZ11 stuff still easily available. Right. Uh, although I'm finding it difficult to get some clocks. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you done it all yourself? Yeah. Is, is this all, your trade, is it? You, yeah, you, this is... Uh, I run a small so. business. Right. Building motorcycles. Yeah. So, um, and Debs is quite happy with this, I presume. She loves it to bits. Yeah, she's she lived in the kitchen you know, <laughs> all winter. <laughs> so tell me about this one. This is a, a Suzuki G, uh, GS550 yeah. frame, tank, tailpiece, all the body kit. Uh, with a GSXR 750 slingshot engine in it. So that's going to go pretty well, oh, isn't it? Oh, it shifts a bit, yeah. yeah and I've, uh, obviously you can see I've lengthened it. I was going to say, you've uh, got a long swing arm on there. You're yeah. into drag racing, straight line. I like to that. keep the, fr the wheels on the floor. I'm not a wheelie merchant, right. you know. Oh, well, that'll help uh, with this longer swing arm, yeah. It's been stretched nine inch. Yeah. Uh, it's been lowered three inch. Uh, the running gear's out of a ZX-10 of Kawasaki. So um, how, how did you pick what you were going to use? How did, I mean, obviously... Obviously, you know, within the trade, I get to ride a lot of motorbikes. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, brakes, the, the GS, did you have an affinity with the GS550 yeah, years the ago? the 550 or originally was my first big four-cylinder motorbike when yeah. I was a youngster. Uh, but it never had the guts it should have had, and it never handled as it should have done. Uh -huh. um, so, basically, over the years, you get to know what bits of the brakes off the Kawasaki are good, or yeah. they were at the time. Yeah. Uh, the engine... It's lovely. You well, know, the engine. Bags of bags of power. We all know about them, don't yeah. we? Yeah. 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 And what's your next project then? Have you got anything else up your sleeve? Well, I'm in the middle of this uh, trike at the moment. It's uh, a three litre Capri engine. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's only seven feet. It's a bit shorter than this. It's shorter than it's this? It's shorter than this. There's no gearbox on it. It's a direct drive. Uh, and it's got. Well, you sit inside exhaust pipes. I've used exhaust <laughs> pipes as wheels, and, you know, the, all the wheel arches right. and made exhaust pipes. Well, but yeah, it's. Uh, just do me a favour, when it's finished, will you let me have a go? Mm, yeah, yeah, I will. You can have a look. I'll have to have yeah. a look. I'll have yeah, a go it's at a that. Smashing hey, thing. Remember what you said, I can have a go. <laughs> yeah.
Looking at these forks on the top here, look what you've got. You've got preload adjustment there, you've got rebound damping, and down the bottom you've got compression damping adjustment. Confused? You won't be, I hope. Well, first thing off, I'm going to put this leg down because it's pretty heavy and we don't actually need it. I'll just put it there because this one I've pre-dismantled for you. So let's have a look at the component parts. If I unscrew this top bit here, inside that big beefy stanchion, we've actually got the cartridge fork assembly itself, if I hold that bit steady. So there we've got it all, all complete. There's the spring. This is the damper tube itself. And up here, you've got your preload adjuster there, your rebound damping, and the compression damping is actually done through that screw there, which controls an oil flow, which actually goes through there. So in effect, your oil is controlled in there to do all the damping. That rebound screw, as you screw it down, operates a, a needle valve that runs down the center there, so that controls the rebound part, but that's where the bulk of the oil is. There's oil in here as well, but that's mainly for lubrication. You can see, if I was to hold this top cap still, as it would be when it's clamped in the top of the forks, and adjusted this one here in the middle, you can see the rings down here, which actually tell you how far you've screwed that down. These aren't threads, they're purely indicators, so you can count the number of turns that you've got showing there, how far you've preloaded that spring. So that's what that's for. I'll put that to one side there. What else have we got? There is your massive beefy stanchion. See that? If you look at that down there, looks like a gun barrel, doesn't it? But massive, but very lightweight. And inside, beautiful chrome tube there with its bearings in there. This is the bit that's going to slide up and down. At the bottom here is the oil seal, which stops um, not only oil coming out, but actually stops dirt going in there. And there's a dust cover as well. So those are the main component parts of your front forks. You can't have the master giving you lessons, can you, without the master showing what you actually can do. That's if you practice every day, three or four hours, seven days a week, over the last decade. And that is how you end up being as good as him. Our man Dave Draper. Now last time we saw him he was being instructed by Jim Lampkin and Martin Lampkin on the basic skills but things have changed somewhat because now we've got Jake Miller and the man himself Dougie Lampkin instructing and things are hotting up somewhat because everything is a lot lot harder and I tell you what our man's doing the business even if he can do a wheelie as he leaves a section. <laughs> Dave, you look just a little bit tired, mate. Just a little bit. Is it, uh, is it a little more difficult than perhaps you thought when you first joined us? When you first yeah. said, oh, go on, I'll have a go. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. But, Considerably. But, uh, the uh, third is easy, isn't it? It's putting it into yeah, practice. The third is easy, it's putting it into practice. When you've got big rocks that you're bouncing off and you don't really want to bounce off too physically. To be honest with you, the camera doesn't help because there are decidedly bigger rocks, the hills are steeper than yeah. the camera ever shows. Yeah. You lose perspective. When you look at them and the likes of Dougie Lampkin just says, just go up here, you think, oh, ah, yeah, yeah, on your bike, mate. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> what do you think about being taught by the master? Uh, I think he was born with one between his legs. He is a very talented guy and yeah. he can teach you an awful lot. I think after you breathe, you better join the queue and get yeah. some more done, mate. I'll tell you what, it's not easy stood around watching you. I can tell you, I've had a bit of a sweat on. We'll get on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, next. Just like last time, Dave. Get him up. Get him up. Get back on it. Perfect, just let it roll. Let it roll. Lovely. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you set me up. <laughs> it's all right though, wasn't it? Get it going. Get it going now, go on. Check it down, Polly. Tired. I want to go home. I've had enough. Are we asking a bit much of you now, mate? Yeah. You know, these are not quite world round stuff, but I'll give you credit. I'm not even sure I'd attempt them. And I've been there and got the t shirt. Yeah. I'm pooped. <laughs> pooped. <laughs> Makeup. I can't swear. There's children present. I'm going home. Ta -da. Well, there'll be more from the trial school after the break. And also, still to come, you can see what I think of this. It's CCM's latest supermoto machine, the R30. We can't exactly go away, can we, without talking to the guy. First of all, JK, who is behind organising the event, and also Dougie, the man himself, who's done the tutoring. We did set you a bit of a task, didn't we, boys? I mean, our Dave had never, ever been off-road riding, ever in his life. He thinks that doing off-road stuff is walking the odd fell. That is it. So we, we set you the task. You raised the challenge. How do you feel he went on? I think he's done uh, pretty well, really, considering, you know, the, the inexperienced things on the road. I mean, he's certainly been... Uh ready to have a go at anything which is a nice thing and then a little bit of confidence we sort of built him along the day I think he's been tackling stuff that he probably never even dreamed of when he arrived here this morning well I think a lot of it is because when you two guys say to him come on get up there he's no choice he's got an audience we've got yeah. the camera on him he's got all the other lads there so he had no choice but you're giving confidence by being yeah, there it, it was getting confident it was watching the other riders and his 10 year old lads in his group and he's thinking <laughs> sort of thinking if he can do it I can do it I suppose he's that, that's yeah. the best thing I mean he could have put the bike down straight away and said it's just not for me but he really stuck at it and I'm sure he's enjoyed it, he's had a, oh, a he's good enjoyed day, it, all right. good day, stuck in with all lads and had a good crack and everything. He's and absolutely cream crack. I don't think he just told him what he was in for before no. he got here because... Oh, no. Uh, no, it would have been rude to because he wouldn't have been <laughs> he here, wouldn't would have come. No, he wouldn't have arrived, and, and, you know, but in fairness, what, what we've learned, what he's learned as well is off-road riding is an asset to road bike riding. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we get all sorts of people come to schools from, you've seen the ability range today from people who are sort of beginning out in the sport and then right to guys who are riding every weekend at a reasonable level. And it's quite nice to think that everyone goes away having learned a little something and they can take that experience either to riding trails at weekends or hopefully to riding their road bike a bit safer. Dougie, just a quickie, how do you feel it's uh, helped you with a road bike riding? Because I know you've ridden a road bike quite a yeah, few Yeah, I times. ride a road bike a little bit and really they are very, very different. But for your throttle control and everything, it's absolutely fantastic. And obviously in the winter you can't ride a road bike. So why don't you get yourself a trials bike and get yourself on the hill here with all these lads and you'll have a better day out than what you will on the road bikes, that is for sure. Well, there's some good advice if ever there was. So that's it, get your trials bike bought, get out there, get some boots and go and have a dirty weekend away. Dave Draper. Certainly give it a hand. Thank you. Cheers. James Daniel. Red Chuck. Happy bunny. Right, mate, and let me just tell you this. Marty Lampkin, Dougie Lampkin, are the world title holder, 10 times world mm. champion. Jake Miller and Jimbo Lampkin, all, all are very impressed with you. Now, we gave Jim a fair challenge when we first got here this morning, I must admit. <laughs> uh, did you believe you could just do as well as you've done? Not a chance. I thought I'd just make a complete fool of myself, or <laughs> stronger, but I think I've been ways, but I've done better than I have envisaged I could do. I think you've done better than they'd yeah. ever envisaged you could do, because when we said to them this morning, we've got to tell you this, 
this man has never been off road in his life. They were all startled, yes. but they've all been very impressed and they've praised you highly. Have you enjoyed yourself? I certainly have. Uh, it's been a good day. Would you take really. up trials riding? Um, probably not. I've uh, I've learned things from it. I learned a lot of things from it. Bike control, um, confidence in myself, um, knowing how much a bike can and can't do. Well, that's good. So you've enjoyed yourself. You've learned a lot. They're impressed with your yeah. abilities. Uh, I've had a chat with Dougie, mm. and he's the man, and he knows what you can do because he's assessed you. Mm. And he has got the greatest amount of confidence in you doing this one final last mm. obstacle, which is uh, a small step. Uh, do you think you can? This one? Um, maybe not. <laughs> no, maybe not. Well, I'll tell you what, no. if you did it, I wouldn't do it either. No. no, the truth is, you have got vertigo. I certainly have. How do you feel? <laughs> not well. <laughs> can I go? There's a growing trend these days for people to move away from bikes like this, a high-performance sports machine, for a number of reasons. One is that they're becoming increasingly difficult and expensive to insure, and two is people want to hang on to their licences. They've realised that they can have just as much fun, but at lower speeds. They're moving to machines like this. And this sits in what is now the fastest growing sector of the bike world. It is, of course, a supermoto. This is the latest supermoto to come out of the CCM stable in Blackburn, Lancashire. A 600cc Rotax powered bundle of fun. Riding the R30 gives you a feeling of invincibility. It makes you feel king of the road. Sat high up behind the wide rental fat bars with zero wind protection becomes very addictive. It handles superbly with the 17 inch wheels at either end shod with some nice sticky rubber. Big singles are all about low down torque and this has got bags of it. It's great fun whacking the throttle and seeing the front wheel head skywards. Now CCM may be a British firm but the R30 isn't quite a true British thoroughbred. So let's have a look at the bits that are homemade back in Lancashire. Well, basically all the, the metal work, all the bits that need welding, for example, the frame, they make this full frame, which has got a beautiful finish on it and really very nicely, very classily put together. Uh, that's made back in the factory. The swing arm, nice fancy poly swing arm, that's made there, the side stand. Basically all the big metal work that they need to weld up, that's all made in-house back in Lancashire. Other stuff is made specifically for CCM in the UK, so then parts are British as well. But there's a lot of it that's made all over Europe. For example, the motor, there it is. It's a Rotax engine, single cylinder, four valve, four stroke motor, pumps out about 55 brake horsepower. That certainly wasn't made in Lancashire, we know that. And there's bits of uh, Europe all over this bike. The wheels, very nice wheels on this, they're Gramica. So they're made in Spain. Front suspension, front forks are white power. The rear monoshock again is white power. We know all about white power, all good stuff. Really, it's made all over the place. I have to say though that CCM have come an awful long way in a short time because you might recall probably a couple of years ago or so I rode one of their new models at the time called the Roadster and I criticised it quite strongly particularly up here up at the dashboard end I said it was unfinished and it didn't have the little luxuries that we expect to find when we're paying over 5,000 quid for a new machine it didn't even have a neutral indicator and it drove me mad well now we've got neutral indicators we've got neutral indicator turn indicator high beam we've got a rev counter speedo all the little things that after all they're not luxuries, they're just things we would expect to find on a bike when we're paying a few thousand quid for it. The switch gear now is much better than it was before. The choke used to be up here on the bars and it was horrible and fiddly. Uh, now it's over here on the left hand side where we would expect to find it. In fact they seem to have taken on board all the little criticisms that not just me but a lot of people made of the bikes of a couple of years ago and they weren't only little criticisms but they've put them right, they've got it all absolutely spot on now. Even things like the little pillion pegs at the back there, the way they fold into these uh, little cutouts, these little brackets here that hold them. Uh, it's just nice, they've done a really good job. I'd recommend anybody to try a supermoto, and in fact CCM themselves do just that. They've been running a series of supermoto track days for which they've recently won an award from the Motorcycle Press. It's a different style of riding, it's not quite off-road and not quite sports bike. It can be as exciting and frantic as you like, or you can relax and enjoy the big thumping single cylinder motor. The R30 is a very functional machine. 
it's not packed with the latest technology and fancy gizmos, a case of having everything you need in bucketfuls, but with no silly frills or gimmicks. You might never have considered a bike like this, but don't knock it until you've tried it. So what will it cost you then to be an R30 owner? Well, for the basic bike it will cost you just over £5,200 plus some on the road charges which takes it up then to just over £5,400. But it doesn't need to finish there because there are quite a number of extras now available for this R30 including a big bore kit. Well, not really a big bore kit, it's a factory fitted kit and it takes the basic engine which is 600cc up to 640cc. It might not improve the brake horsepower significantly, well it doesn't add much to it to be honest with you, but what it does, it gives you a lot more torque, it makes the motor much more grunty low down and that's what big singles are all about. Obviously it's available in three different colour options, lime green, black or my favourite, a nice classy looking silver one. And this black one in the middle has actually got a low seat on it, this is a low seat version which is just about two inches lower which might not sound very much but you can notice it when you sit on it and as you look through the bikes there you can see it is lower. So if you've never been on a supermoto have a go on one, borrow one, go and get yourself a test ride on one and I'm sure you'll agree with me that you can have just as much fun on one of these as you can on any big superbike but at much lower speeds.